Hi everyone, welcome to Java Techie. Nowadays, everyone using Spring or Spring Boot framework to develop their web application, right? In fact, I extensively worked on these two frameworks. While working, I found there are tons of annotations given by these frameworks and sometimes we are using those annotations without knowing its functionality, isn't it? Which is not a good practice. So to make you understand what are those annotations and at what time we can use those annotations, I prepared one cheat sheet with 50 plus annotations. Okay. So we'll go through each and every annotations with example so that you no need to buy hurt these annotations and its uses. Okay. So without any further delay, let's get started. So I created one small Spring Boot application to demonstrate all its useful annotations with example. Since we started with Spring Boot application and we know that Spring Boot app starts with main method. So let's begin with the main Spring Boot annotation that is at the rate Spring Boot application. Okay. So this at the rate Spring Boot application annotation is a convenience annotation that combines other annotations like at the rate enable auto configuration, at the rate component scan and at the rate configuration. Now if you go to the source code of at the rate Spring Boot application, you can find here it is just a alias for at the rate enable auto configuration, at the rate component scan and at the rate configuration. Fine. Now let's understand role of each annotation. So this at the rate enable auto configuration annotations, this automatically configure the Spring application based on the jar dependency that we have added in our pom.xml. For example, if the h database jar is present in the class path and we have not configured any beans related to the database manually, then Spring Boot auto configuration feature automatically configure it in our project. Okay. Now the next one at the rate component scan. This is just a simple annotation where it will just scan your bean so that it can visible to the IOC container. Okay. Let's say you define a different package structure or you just want to load specific package and class to IOC container, then you can use at the rate component scan and you can provide the base packages or base classes. Okay. Now the next at the rate configuration, we use this annotation for Java based configuration where we can define the bin definitions inside this class so that Spring IOC can load it. Okay. So these are the three annotations Spring developer or Spring Boot developer combine these three annotations to a single annotation that is the root one at the rate Spring Boot application. Okay. Fine. Now let's discuss about stereotype annotations. Spring framework provides us some special annotations like at the rate component, at the rate service, at the rate rest controller and at the rate repository. These are called stereotype annotations. Basically these annotations are used to create Spring Bean automatically in the application context. If you annotate any of these annotations on top of your Spring Bean, then Spring will scan that bin and manage its life cycle begin from object creation to object destroy. Okay. So this at the rate component annotation is the main or base stereotype annotation you can say and other three are just derived from the at the rate component annotation. Okay. Now if I can show that in the source code, let me go to any of the class repository. So you can see this is what the component, this is the root annotation. Okay. Now if I will go back and if I will type all the annotation here to just show you that others are just derived from at the rate component. So I will just type service, then I will just type at the rate repository, then at the rate controller. If I will open the service, this is what the derived from the component class and similarly at the rate repo, this is what also derived from the component class and at the rate controller, this is also derived from the component class, right? So let me remove all. This is not the recommended way to write these annotations. I'll just remove everything. Okay. So now you might have a question why there are four annotations. As you know, at the rate component is the parent annotations and everywhere we can use it, right? That's absolutely correct. We can use it, but the main purpose of other annotation will tell the role of that classes. Okay. Like if you annotate at the rate controller, someone easily identify that, okay, this is what the web layer, 
where I can expose my REST API. So just go to the controller class. So I defined your other REST controller so that easily someone can identify this is what the class where I can expose my REST endpoint. Correct. Now similarly, if you go to the service class, service IMPL class, by seeing this other service annotation, someone can easily identify that. Okay, this is what the class where I need to write my business logic. Similarly, if you go to the repository class, by seeing this annotation, someone can easily identify this is where I need to write the database logic. Okay, that is why there is three different annotation to just define a role of that classes. Okay, and also it's a good practice to specify meaningful annotations in each layer. Okay, hope you get the clear picture about stereotype annotations. So this is one of the interview question guys. Now let's discuss about Spring Core annotations. So there is list of Spring Core annotations are there configuration, bin, auto add, qualifier, lazy, value, property source, configuration properties, profile and scope. I'll, I'll explain each and every annotations with example. Okay. So let's begin with the other rate configuration and other rate bin. Usually these two annotation used when you want to use Java based configuration. When I say Java based config, it means we don't want to handle the spring bin lifecycle either using annotations or XML. So when you write other rate configuration, it indicates that the class can be used by spring IOC container as a source of bin definition. Okay, let me write the code to explain about this annotation. So let me write a some class called uh, bin config or something like that. Okay. And I, when I annotate here at the rate configuration, now Spring IOC will expect from this class to define couple of bin annotation. I mean just define couple of bin which will return the object. For example, let me create a bin, let's say test bin or something like that. Okay, in this test bin, I'll write a method, uh, public, some, some random method, okay, public void uh, method then I'll just print something S out just print something test bin method logic executed something fine now how can I define this as a spring bin there is two way I can use the XML otherwise I can simply annotate here at the rate component right but I don't want to do that I just want to define this bin definition inside my config class. How I can define it? Simply just create an object of it. Okay. Just test bin. Then just return some object. Return new test bin object. Fine. And just annotate here at the rate bin annotation. So here when you start your application, Spring IOC will search an annotation with Arthuret configuration. Then we will search for a annotation Arthuret bin inside this Arthuret configuration classes. Once we find Arthuret bin, then immediately Spring IOC will create object of it and will maintain its lifecycle by himself. Okay. Now to show you that, let me inject this bin somewhere so that I can show you that. Okay. So in controller, I have few endpoint. I will just use here. So I need to inject that bin, right? So that I can access it. Private test bin test bin. I can inject using other rate auto add. Then I can simply call here uh, test bin dot method. Fine. Let me run this application. When I access this API, it should call the method of this test bin class. So I'll just run it. It will take few seconds. So you can see here it started on port 8080. Now let me clear this console. If I'll go to the browser, if I'll type localhost 8080 students, then get all the students. I got all the four objects which I added in my H2DV. And I just want to verify the method call, right? Test bin method logic executed. Now we didn't create the object of test bin. It's just created by Spring IOC by reading this bin config class. So if you remember, 
we usually create the kafka configuration or rest template configuration inside at the rate configuration class right we are doing something like this public create the object of rest template then get the template object just return it right new rest template this is how we usually do right and we are just annotating here at the rate b and then wherever you want to use this rest template we are just injecting it using auto add that's it right so this is how we can define a bin inside a configuration class so i'll just remove it because we are not using any rest template here now now let's move to the next one that is at the rate auto add so if i'll go to the any class let me go to the controller class so if you observe in this controller i just want to use the object of this student service class okay so if you observe this student service is a interface and it's having the implementation student service impl so this object i want to use in my controller class that is where i just tell to the spring boot i just inject using at the rate auto add you create object of this class and give it to me so that i can use it okay now to show you what i will do i'll just remove this auto add annotation okay so if i'll remove this spring will not able to create the object of it because we are not creating object manually right so let me run this class i'll just rerun it definitely you will get the exception here okay so that is the reason we need auto add but i just want to show you that exception so server started here now i'll just access the endpoint i am getting 500 internal server error because i believe i will get the null pointer exception yeah i am getting the null pointer exception in line number 43 okay because of this student service dot get student since we are not creating object of it i will get null object and null dot get student will throw me the null pointer exception okay so that is the reason you need to tell to the spring boot or spring framework just inject this bin i used at the rate auto add annotation you just inject this object in my class wherever i want to use it that's it now if you observe there is a challenge so in student controller i just injected a interface student service right and if you observe there is one implementation class only one implementation class now let's say in future i just want to define another v2 version of this implementation class let's say student service impl v2 of it okay this is the version 2 of the service impl i'll just implement it from student service and i will just override the methods i will not um, give any logic for now i just want to show you the use case so just annotate here at the rate service fine now for this student service i have two implementation so if i will click here there is two implementation right student service impl which is the v1 version and student service v2 version with some enhancement now if i will run this application it should work right let me run this then we will find out what is the problem here okay first let me run it let's clear all so you can see here we are getting some exception here so if you read it carefully field student service in this controller class required a single bin but two were found this controller class is expecting a single bin but there is two bin one is the service impl and another is the service impl b2 right so you can see here these are the two classes now if you see the action here consider making one of the bin as primary updating the consumer what is this consumer to accept multiple bins or using at the rate qualifier to identify that bin that should be consumed now if you see this action it already provided you the solution you need to tell to the spring boot i have a interface and that interface having the having the two implementation now you need to tell to the which exact bin you want to load here whether student service impl or student service impl b2 you need to tell to that spring boot how you can tell it you can tell using annotation at the rate qualifier here you can tell to the spring boot please load the bin the name which i am giving okay so for now if i will give this one student service impl let me go to the controller you just need to provide the alias name of it okay i am telling to the spring boot for this particular interface there is two implementation but you ignore whatever i am giving you just load this whatever the bin name i am specifying you just load that particular bin object okay 
Now if I will run this, there will be no exception. You can able to access your API. So let's wait it to complete. So it started. Now if I will start the application or if I will just hit the endpoint, I will get the response here. Right? So now that is what you need to use the qualifier. Now if you will see the next annotation is at the rate primary, right? I missed it, I believe. Let me add it. That is also one important annotation at the rate primary. Now, if you observe in the code for this particular student service, there are two qualified bin student service IMPL and student service IMPL V2. If you don't want to use qualifier and always you want to give the priority to a single bin, either student service IMPL or student service IMPL V2. Whatever the scenario, I just want to load this particular bin. I don't know anything. Then you can simply use the at the rate primary annotation. So just go to that particular class which bin you want to give a priority. Just annotate here at the rate primary here. Okay. So I will just remove this from the qualifier because I don't want to use it. I just want to give a priority to a specific bin. That is where I just added primary here. Okay, now if I will run our application, always this particular student service IMPL B2 will be injected in my controller. So let's test it. So if you observe here, everywhere we are, we are returning the null, right? So there is no logic will be written from the code. So we'll just verify it. Yeah, now if I will access it, I won't get any response. See here, now if you will go and check, there is no error. It means this is just injecting the student service IMPL B2 because the return type is null and we are not able to see anything. So for now, I will just make the primary as student service IMPL, not B2. So I will just give here. Fine. Now, okay, let me do command Z. Fine. Now just run it. So usually this at the rate primary annotation, the best use case of it when you have multiple data source or uh, database configuration being in your application, you can give a primary to a specific connection either in MySQL or MongoDB, you can define the database connection and you can give a primary annotation. So already I explained at the rate primary annotations with example, you can check out my Spring Boot with uh, multiple data source video. Okay, You can find the exact use case of at the rate primary. So I believe it started. Yeah. Now if I'll access it, I'll get the response because the service IMPL is injected to my controller. Fine. Now let's move to the next one that is at the rate lazy annotation. As you know, by default, Spring Bean are eager loading, right? I mean, if you define Bean in your application, then Spring IOC will by default create its object. However, it does not matter whether you are using that Bean or not which really increase the heap, right? Now, how we can avoid that? So there, you can use at the rate lazy annotations. We can tell to the Spring or Spring Boot, hey, just create or load the bin on demand only. Otherwise, you keep quiet, don't do anything, okay? So let me show you an example of lazy loading. So I'll just minimize this. I'll create a bin here. I'll just create two bin to show you the eager loading and lazy loading behavior of Spring. So I'll just create a java class lazy loading bin okay then i will create another class new java class i'll name it eager loading bin fine so this were the eager loading i'll just define a constructor to just print that the object is created a out i'll just print ego loading bin or object created okay object created same statement i will just add in my lazy loading so since this is the bin either i can define using xml or annotation so here i will use the component annotation okay now go to the lazy loading bin i will also define the constructor here and i will add a statement here lazy loading bin object created okay i'll also define this as a other component now if i'll define other component then by default this object will be created okay so what i'll do 
let's define then we will differentiate it so i'll just define now since i define component for lazy loading and eagle loading both object will be created by spring ioc right because we annotated here now this i just want to load it lazily whenever i want it i will tell to the spring boot to load this bin so i just define it at the rate lazy now simply let me rerun this application we'll see which object spring created so it will take few second yeah now if you observe the output here it's just created the object of eager loading object okay which is the eager loading bin now if you observe here there is two bin eager loading and lazy loading in eager loading we just define at the rate component so spring will create its object see here eager loading bin i am not using it anywhere in my other package right but still spring boot is creating its object it means this spring boot is eager loading okay and if you don't want to achieve that eager loading you want to load your bin whenever you need it then you can define at the rate lazy now what i'll do i'll just inject this bin or i'll just use this bin then only spring will create object of it okay so to prove that what i'll do i'll just go to my controller then i'll just define this bin private uh, what is that lazy loading bin lazy loading bin i'll just define at the rate auto add then i'll just call the i'll not call anything i'm just injected it right that's enough spring will understand okay somewhere these guys want to use that particular bin so i need to load it okay so i'll just rerun this so here if you can see eager loading bin object created lazy loading bin object created once we use this lazy loading bin then only spring created its object because of at the rate lazy annotation right i believe this lazy loading or at the rate lazy concept is clear for you now let's move into the next one that is at the rate value annotation okay so whenever you want to load some metadata from the properties file then you can use at the rate value annotation for example let me define some key value in our application dot properties file let me go inside at the rate resource class i will go to the application dot properties file let's think that i want to load this key value related to the mail okay i just want to build some api which will trigger the email using java mail sender so for that i just need these three field from host and port so i just define these three in my properties file as a key and value and i want to load these three properties value how i can do that i can do that using uh, at the rate value annotation so for example i'll just go to this controller class i'll write everything here only okay so that i can show you so here i just want to get those three value private string host then what is that let me cross verify once again from host and port right so i'll just go to the controller class then i'll just define here private string from then private string i'll give port right so using at the rate value i can get that particular uh, value from the metadata or application dot file now how i can load that from i just need to define the key here okay using at the rate value annotation i'll tell to the spring boot go and check in my application dot properties file and load this key what is the key this is what the key to load if you'll specify this key spring will load the value for you go to the controller just define that key fine similarly i'll just define for other two field this is for host you need to give the valid key whatever you mention here there is no spelling mistake okay then this is the port now i just want to print it somewhere so i can do something like i can print it here only okay sys out then i can print something like uh from then i can print here let me add a space host then i can define port here okay so i'll just add some random string here to understand 
mail props load using at the rate value fine so i'll just restart the application now application started on port 8080 and we just define this inside all endpoint right let me call that before that let me clear the console first i'll just hit the endpoint so if you observe here it's getting printed right mail props load using at the rate value annotation this is from this is host and this is the port that is what we defined here right that's fine now if you observe we didn't give the name of our properties file to the spring boot right now if you go to the student controller we just tell to load this particular key from the properties file but which properties file we didn't specify anywhere because currently we are loading it from application dot properties file that will be automatically load by spring boot but if you'll define your custom property something like let me define a properties let's say custom properties then spring boot won't load this particular properties so let's say i'll just name it key one and then this is the value but let's not do that let me give some message message so i'll just give uh, loading from external props you can give any key value whatever the mail things mail from host port i can define here also okay but to show you that if you will not using the application dot properties file how you can tell to the spring boot that load this particular custom properties that is the reason i just added some dummy key and value so what i'll do in the student controller i'll just tell to the spring boot load the properties file which i am giving so there is an annotation called property source and here you can define the file name so i'll just define the file is there inside my class path the name of the file is custom dot properties okay and i'll just load the field which is private string message and i'll just enter here at the red value and i'll just give the symbol dollar then the give the key key name okay so if you'll check here the key name is message so you can rename it whatever the key you want you can give it for now i will keep it message only and i'll just give it here now if i'll run this code okay i, I just need to print this somewhere right so i'll just print it here only s out new value uh, what is that message fine now let me rerun this so application started on port 8080 go to the browser just run it and if you'll go and check in the console you can see here right the new value loaded and also application dot properties this is loaded by default and this is what we loaded externally by using at the rate property source that's fine right now let's move to the next one that is at the rate configuration properties so this is very interesting annotation i'll tell you the exact use case of this at the rate configuration properties let's say you have bunch of key and value in your application dot properties file or your custom properties file okay so rather than load it one by one let's say you have data source properties where driver class name username uh, password url like all the n number of field you have okay and you want to bind them a dto class or a single bin class and you want to map those key to that particular dto then how you can do that for now let's try with this mail okay mail from mail host and mail port these are the three keys there i want to map this value to a single bin or dto class how i can do that let me create a dto i will just define here only guys i will just create a class uh, mail props or something like that fine and then i just need to define at the rate configuration properties and inside that you need to provide prefix okay i will tell you what is the prefix now if you will see in my application dot properties file key is mail dot from mail dot host mail dot port right 
now what is the unique word here that is the mail okay so i can consider this as a prefix now if i'll do mail dot from it should give me this mail dot host it should give me this right so i can define the mail as a prefix here then simply i will define um, these three fields so i will just copy it from the controller i do not write it again these are the three field right i will just copy it go to the mail props then i will just remove it because i don't want to load it manually i want to load it using the other rate configuration properties this is really interesting you can be i don't know i used it many times but once you involved with this other rate configuration properties once you understand it you will definitely use it in your project whenever you are loading the external properties okay so since i added lombok i can use other rate data otherwise you can write other rate getter and setter and to tell to the string that this is my bean i can annotate other rate component fine now with the prefix it will load from host and port now if i'll go to my uh, controller class and i will just remove these two then we'll just only print the mail props okay so i'll just inject that mail props first here private mail props mail props then i'll just use other rate auto add fine then i will just print it guys s out mail properties then i can print it since i added other rate data by default two string method will be available for now i will just restart this yeah so it started now i will hit the endpoint this is what the only single endpoint i am doing modifying here guys okay so i just ran it now go to the console you can see here right all the key map to your dto class which is mail props fine now let's move into the next one that is at the rate profile okay so this annotation is really very useful i believe everyone must use it in their project we usually use this annotation whenever we want to load some configuration specific to the environment let's take an example we are using database in our project right and each environment specific data source properties or connection database connection properties are different for development driver class name url username and password are different than other environment like stage or production right as a developer when i write and test my code i should use development environment specific database connection and when you want to debug some bug we need to use stage database connection right now how i can switch from one environment to another that is where at the rate profile annotation came to the picture now if you'll see the code and if you will go to the resource folder i'll just show you here in the resource folder i have the file name application hyphen dev dot properties application hyphen stage dot properties and application hyphen prod dot properties right so here i define three different properties specific to separate environment okay so this uh, application hyphen dev dot properties here i can write all my development environment related configuration similarly in stage i can define all my stage environment related configuration it can be database configuration or kafka configuration because things are vary from one environment to another environment right similarly this is for production now i am just debugging the code one of the bug i found and i just want to debug it in lower environment in stage environment then how i can tell to the spring boot that there is three application dot properties specific to the environment dev stage and prod just load the stage for me so that i can continue my testing right that is where we can use at the rate profile annotation now if you'll go to the config package so i created one class called dv config okay here i am just loading the driver class name url username and password i'm and, and then i'm simply printing it i'm nothing i'm not doing anything here okay so i will i will just load the key from the corresponding uh, file from that specific environment based on the profile so if you observe here i just specify the profile stage now stage means it will go to this application hyphen stage dot properties and it will load this key okay so let me show you that i'll just run this 
or apart from that if you go to the application dot properties file also you need to specify who is your active profile that environment you need to specify here okay now if i'll quickly run this you can see in the console that it will print the stage related database properties okay we'll see that so here if you can see the console we are just loading the stage related database connection here right stage db driver uh, db url db username and db encrypted password so that is what we just specify here right that is what the value we are getting here now let's say there is some issue on the production i just want to switch to the production environment so how i can do that simply go to the db config and just change it to the prod okay also go to the application or properties file that is what the main file and just change this spring profile active to prod now let me rerun our application now you can see here instead of stage it should print production related uh, data source properties okay so let's wait it to complete so if you can see here the prod db driver class prod db url prod db username and password it loaded based on the active profile which we set in our application dot properties file and also based on other profile annotation so this is what one useful example of using spring profile you can use using this annotation or also you can go with the xml approach okay now let's move to the next one that is other scope this is the last annotation of spring core related annotations which we defined here now let's understand this other scope okay this particular annotation indicates scope of bin such as singleton prototype or session or request okay so how we can use this other scope annotation just go to a bin wherever you want to define the scope of that bin so if you define a bin scope as a singleton then it will just create a single object for a context okay for a application context if you define a bin scope as a prototype based on the number of request or based on the Num how many time you use that particular instance it will create a different different object to prove that what i'll do i'll just go to the controller and in the controller what i'll do i'll just define the scope here okay so scope i'll just specify the scope name as singleton then what i'll do i'll just create a constructor of it so that i can print that whether object is getting created or not so just create a empty constructor i'll just add this then i'll just add a sopln statement okay controller object created fine now i'll just since we define the bin scope as a singleton it will only create one object as many as request will send it does not matter it will create only one object okay so let me start it so if you can see the output here controller object created here okay i'll just clear this console and i will just try to access controller many times fine four five many times i hit the same endpoint now if you'll see there is no further statement about controller object created because the object create once then it stored in application context that is what the spring reused it now if i will define the scope as a prototype then see what will be the difference between this singleton and prototype i'll just define proto type i'll just restart my application now if you observe here there is no object created yet let me hit the endpoint one i will hit multiple times two three four five six seven if you'll go and see as many times i hit the request controller object getting created here okay that is what the difference between prototype scope and singleton scope similarly you can give a try with the request and session okay so i believe we almost covered all the annotation about spring core hope this spring core annotations is clear for you now let's move to the next set of annotations about rest api related annotations okay we'll go through each and every annotations and we'll try to understand it
when we say rest api first annotation come in mind that is at the rate rest controller with these annotations we define that this is the class where we exposed our rest endpoint and this is one of the stereotype annotations which we already discussed if you see in my controller class i'll just stop this server if you'll see this controller class this is where we annotated at the rate rest controller and here i define three endpoint one to save the student object one to get the student object based on the id and another fetch all the student object okay these are the three rest endpoint i am exposing from my controller class and to tell to or to specify the role of this class i define this is what my controller with annotation at the rate rest controller right now the next annotation is at the rate request mapping this is quite old annotations which introduced to define http methods i mean using this annotations you can define what http method you want to expose your endpoints okay for example let's say uh, here i just want to or in uh, this particular line i just want to change something like i want to use request mapping okay i don't want to use this at the rate post mapping i will come to this point later so i just want to use the old annotation which is request mapping here i just need i just need to define the which http method i want to use so i can define method then i can define a request that there is a enum which i can use request method post right because i want to save something then you can define the url but first let me define the url let's say i just want to use the url as slash save and this is what my method type then you can also define the consumes media type so i'll just give application slash json fine similarly you can also define the produces media type i can give application slash json so you can write like this but usually in latest spring version we are not using this annotation because spring developer provide separate annotation for each http method like get mapping post mapping put mapping and delete mapping okay so you can see here get mapping post put and delete mapping that is where we are just using the other post mapping you no need to define the method type and the consumes and produces okay everything will be take care by the annotation and if you observe this post mapping also inherited from request mapping similarly if you'll check this get mapping also inherited from request mapping all these four annotation post get put delete inherited from request mapping annotation okay now why there are four annotations so each annotations define specific role here if you want to fetch something or if you want to retrieve something then you can use at the rate get mapping if you want to save some information to the database or if you want to perform some create operation you can use at the rate post mapping if you want to perform some update operation then you can use at the rate put mapping similarly if you want to delete something then you can use at the rate delete mapping okay so if you'll see the code i just want to save a student object to database that is where i just use post mapping and whenever i just want to fetch object from the service or db i just use get mapping similarly you can write put mapping or delete mapping you can check out my spring boot crowd example video okay you will find all the four annotations and their uses that's fine now let's move to the next annotation that is at the rate request body now if you observe in my code i just added at the rate request body annotation in post method argument right here i want to perform post operation i mean i want to save this student object to the database okay so that is where the code i wrote in this particular endpoint now how can i access this endpoint i just need to define the url and then i just need to pass this student json as a request body from the postman something like this okay id name role number and department so if you observe in the student class these are the field id name role number and department that is the field i am just giving here right in the postman now the question here so when i pass a json object from the postman then how does it map to the student object which is there in my method argument and then that student object will going to the save in the db right so let me hit the endpoint okay okay i just 
I just need to start the server okay so better let me debug it so that I can show you let me start it in the debug mode so server started now once I pass this JSON object and once I send the request request will come to this controller now if you observe the whatever the JSON I passed here that map to this particular student object and you can see the value of student here right ID name role number department the JSON getting deserialized to the student object isn't it so that is where this request body annotation help us it will automatically deserialize the body of HTTP request into the DTO or model whatever you defined here okay that is the reason we are using request body annotation so I will just pass this fine now let's move to the next one that is other path variable and request param so this request body annotation we use to pass the payload but there may be a possible scenario that you need to pass the input as part of request URL itself okay so that is the case you can use other path variable so I just want to pass the input as part of request URL now if you observe I just want to get the student based on the ID and this ID I will pass as part of request URL right now what is the URL slash students then I just want to access this particular endpoint give the ID of student and face the student object from the DB now if I will go to the postman if I will type students then I will just give the ID this is what we just added right I will just give this ID now if you observe here I am giving this input 109 as a input parameter to the my request URL right if and I will just remove this because this is the get API right now hit the request okay let me mute the breakpoint go to the postman you can see the response here right so this is how you can use the other path variable and if you want to pass input as part of request URL also you can use other request param rather than using this path variable so you can use annotation called request param and you can remove this you can give some ID here ID by request or something some random ID or some random URL and you can provide the parameter which you want to pass as part of request okay you can give something like that I am not going to write it but I will just show you you can go to the Chrome and you can add this rather than giving the path variable what is the URL you specify ID by request you can specify ID by request then what field you want to pass that is ID and you can pass the input here let's say 109 and then you can hit the endpoint you will get the result from the DV okay so I'll just revert these changes okay let me revert it fine now you might have a question why there is two annotations to pass the input as part of request URL right you can give using other request param you can give using other path variable what is the reason behind it I will tell you if you will use other path variable and then you are not giving the input then you will get 404 so if you are using path variable you are forced or you are mandated to pass the input otherwise you will get the 404 but in case of request param it is optional if you will not give the input there is no harm you won't get any exception for example let's say I'll, I'll just show you here so this is what the endpoint right if I will give this I will get the result since this is the path variable code I will not give anything okay I'll just get the 404 but if you will use the request param there is no exception that is request param won't force you to pass the input as part of your request URL so it depends on your business what need to use whether the field is mandatory or optional based on that you need to decide whether you need to use path variable or request param okay now let's move to the next one that is other rate controller advice and other rate exception handler okay usually these two annotations used to handle exception in your application now if I'll show you in the code let me go to the yeah this method get student so I'm giving the ID based on that ID I will face the student object if it is present I will return it if that that is not present in the service then I am just throwing the student not found exception so I just created this class student not found exception and I am just throwing that exception fine 
now here when your controller throws this particular exception then immediately spring or spring boot will search a class which is annotated with other at other at rest controller advice or at the rate controller advice okay once he found a class immediately he will delegate request to that corresponding class and inside that class it will just find the matched annotation or matched exception okay so if you observe in this controller we are throwing student not found exception and then in rest controller advice we have already mapped the student uh, what is the student not found exception right if you will go and check here already we found the matched exception which we are throwing from our controller and there we annotated at the rate exception handler fine now in this class simply we are telling to the spring this is the method okay i will build my custom error message and i will return it back to the end user okay so that is where the at the rate rest controller advice and at the rate exception handler annotation is required to handle the exception in your rest api okay so if you want i can debug it and i can throw you okay let me add a breakpoint so that i can show you let's go to the Oh, controller class fine just add a breakpoint i'll just remove other breakpoints fine now since we already started on debug mode i can directly test it out go to the postman i'll give some id which is not there in my db i'll give some random id okay now i'll send the request request came to here then it will just go to the student service and i will just pass it now if you see the student is empty right so i am checking student is present if it is not then throw this exception so once your controller throws the exception immediately request will delegate to this rest controller advice class okay so this is what the advice class so the breakpoint will come to here okay why it's not taking i am not sure let me build it i will if let's see i'll just add it i'll just resume it you can see here request immediately delegate to this here because it found the matched exception that is why we annotated at the rate exception handler fine now request come here it will just build a app error object i just created this uh, particular dto class to define the error code message and http status fine it will just build that and simply it will just return it now if you we'll go and check in your postman we are getting error code some random uid number message student not found with this id and the http status which i am hard coding here that is what i am getting here right so this is where these two annotation helps to handle the exception in your restful web services okay so i hope this rest api related annotation is clear for you now let's move to the next one that is spring data api related annotations okay so if you observe here there are few annotation at the rate entity at the rate table at the rate column at the rate transactional then also there is some association mapping related annotations between entity to entity one to one one to many many to one and many to many okay so let's begin with these four annotation entity table and column so if we'll go to the any entity in this jpa implementation or it's specific to the hibernate also if you'll go to the entity i created already one student entity that is what we are just storing to the db and we are retrieving it right now if i will go inside this entity i have the field called id name role number and department so i just define this at the rate entity by annotating this i am telling to the jpa or hibernate this is what the object i want to perform db operation okay so that is where you need to define the at the rate entity annotation and also if you observe i just annotated at the rate table here to define that to create a table with the name which i am giving you can define this particular annotation if you will not define this at the rate table annotation then hibernate or jpa will create a table based on your entity class name with student okay so it depends on your use case if you want to customize your table name you can define at the rate table annotation then these two are the mandatory annotation entity and table and then next i define the field id name role number and department right you must need to define one primary key with the annotation at the rate id and again this column annotation is optional if you want to create your 
custom column name if you will not specify first of all if you will not specify this column then the column will be created in dvr with this variable name id name roll number and department but if you want to customize then you can define your own name what you want to create for column okay apart from that if you want to also create id auto generated then you can use at the rate generated value okay generated value if you want to define generated type or generator type in hibernate there is couple of generator you can use it so let me see if i can see the option control space okay you can define couple of type here guys let me see if i can see the enums fine i list out all the generator type but you can define the custom generator or default generator of hibernate using this annotation fine now let's move to the next one that is at the rate transactional so if you have any association mapping in your uh, application and if you want to roll back the transaction if something going wrong let's say you have user and payment entity if payment is getting failed you don't want to save user information in the DB you want to roll back all the transaction I mean you just don't want to store the payment as well as the user if there is a failure then in that case you can use at the rate transactional annotation so already i uploaded video how to use transaction string transaction you can check out that it will be available on my spring boot playlist but i will just show you the annotation here okay so just go to the any class service i don't have that scenario with me now but i will just show you with the annotation okay so let's say for this art student i just want to implement at the rate transactional so you can use transactional annotation then there you can define isolation and also you can define the propagation okay so isolation you can define let me check the enum type isolation read committed okay then you can define the propagation required new or something like that okay let me check yeah required new or you can define the required required yeah you can define this fine with this annotation you can tell to the spring or spring boot framework that this is the method i just want to implement the transaction if something going wrong don't save any information to the database just roll back it okay so if you'll write this annotation manually you no need to write tx commit or tx rollback okay spring will take care of everything so for now we don't have any transactional scenario i'll just remove it now let's move to the next one that is entity class relationships so it depends on your use case which association mapping you need to choose for example let's say i have a student here right a student can apply for multiple course right so then I can define a mapping here. I can do something like course. Then I just need to define a class called course. Let me see. I have the option create class course. Fine. This will also an entity, right? I can just add a annotation. Let's say these are the annotation. I'll not write the code. I will just show you the annotation type. Okay. Then you, you must need to define a field private int id then private course name okay okay string course name then you must need to define this other rate id guys fine now i am just telling here a single student can apply many courses okay that is where the scenario will be student one can multiple course or many course so the annotation should be one to many fine and here you just need to define who will, who will be your target entity uh, what is that target entity right target entity which is nothing course dot class right dot class and you can define the what is that fetch type fetch mode eager or lazy similarly cascade and you also you need to define the 
join columns fine and you just need to define the name of it you can give something like uh, student foreign key this is what the example of one to many similarly you just want to reverse it right many to one what you can do rather than just inject here just go to the course and just inject the student here private student student and here you can do the reverse one many to one many courses can be applied by a single student so you can use this again you can do the target entity phase cascade everything you can define here okay if a single entity let's say student is just mapped to a single entity then you can use one to one there is no possibility that a student can have multiple address right so in that case student with address you can do one to one so you need to find out a scenario that what exact association mapping fit for that use case based on that you can define the um, these uh, annotations okay so i believe this session is clear for you there are few more annotations which i supposed to cover but i will not cover in this today's tutorial we will just continue a separate part for it okay so there are few annotations specific to security cross origin secured pre authorized permit all then few annotation for caching then few annotation for aop aspect oriented programming aspect point code then after returning after throwing around before and spring cloud related annotations kafka related annotations we'll continue this in next part of our video okay so based on your response i will plan for the next tutorial thanks for watching this video guys that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video meet you soon with a new concept